love buying all sorts of new gadgets and toys, but one of my favorite gadgets to buy is camera gear. With an endless amount of camera options and accessories in the market, there's no end to learning something new. But if you're just looking for a new camera to get started with your own home videos or YouTube channel, it can definitely be overwhelming. For this video, I'm going to show you what quality you get at different camera levels and the trade-offs and benefits as you incrementally spend a little bit more money. Just keep in mind, I'm no expert at this, I just love this stuff. And I'm going to simplify a lot of things to avoid too much confusing jargon and focus on a couple specific camera attributes that most videographers will be looking for when starting out. Also keep in mind that the camera itself is just a small, small part of good video, but it's definitely a start. So first, let's start with what you probably already have, a cell phone. I'm using a Blue Life 1X, and this is one of the cheaper cell phones out in the market today. So it definitely won't compare to the quality you'll get out of a higher quality phone like a Samsung S6 or an iPhone 6S. But even still, I don't think the quality is too bad. It does record at 1080p resolution, but it's not too sharp the quality and you won't be able to zoom or change any lenses, so you are limited in creative control. So this also means that you'll have limited depth of field to get those nice blurry backgrounds. And the footage can be a little shaky due to poor ergonomics and lack of stabilization. But despite all the flaws you get with using your cell phone, it is free. So try taking advantage of what you already have, and you might be surprised by the quality you can already achieve. Moving on up to the next category of cameras, I would be looking at these higher end point and shoots. I'm using the Sony RX100 Mark III, but something like the Canon G7X PowerShot should give you similar results. With this setup, you're getting 1080p resolution, so it's good enough detail for 90% of YouTube viewers. You get a flip out screen so you can see yourself while filming. There are no interchangeable lenses on the Sony, but it does have a good variety of zoom levels and you'll be able to get some shallow depth of field for those artistic product shots. It also has built-in image stabilization which makes for nice stable handheld shots. I've used this Sony RX100 Mark III for most of my videos and still use it to today for random run and gun videos, but lately I've moved up to the Panasonic G7. This camera has started to become really popular since its launch last year since it hits a really nice price point and gives you access to record at 4K resolution. So you can probably tell the difference even if you're not using a 4K monitor, but you be the judge if it's worth it to you. On the G7, you get a flip out screen so you can see yourself while recording. You also get interchangeable lenses and a good control over depth of field. But I'll get into a little bit more detail on that in just a bit. The image stabilization is also good for handheld video, but all the stabilization is done in the lens. So if you buy a different lens, you may lose that feature. Another good product to look at is the Panasonic FZ300 that's very similar to the G7, but you just don't get the interchangeable lenses. So that brings me to the next stage of camera quality, buying lenses. So this is the G7 using the Olympus 17mm 1.7 lens. So everything is still the same, 4K quality, but the difference here is with the new lens option, you get more creative control and that whole blurry background effect that most people want to achieve. Keep in mind, lenses are pretty expensive, and you'll probably end up spending more money on the lenses than the camera body itself, but it's definitely worth it. At this price point, you're probably looking at cameras like the popular Canon 70D or the Canon Rebel series of products, combined with a fast prime lens. The downside for going with a Canon versus the Panasonic G7 is that you'll only get 1080p resolution but the benefit is access to all their amazing Canon lenses and even shallower depth of field. And it also has very good usable continuous autofocus on the 7DD if that's something you need. So it doesn't end there. If you've got more cash to burn, there's even higher end cameras to desire. Some of them that I have my eye on are products like the Panasonic GH4 that's considered the bigger brother to the G7, where you'll get everything that the G7 offers but better build construction, weather ceiling so you can shoot in the rain, a longer battery life, and higher frame rate so you can produce slow motion video. Or if you look beyond that, there's the very expensive but highly desirable Sony a7S II that does lack a flip out screen, but has amazing low light capability for filming clean video in very dark environments, is capable of very shallow depth of field for that extremely creamy blurry background. 
So that's it for me fantasizing about my next camera purchase. Hopefully this helps you find your perfect camera. Was this video helpful or did you want to see any more other topics like lighting, sound or anything else? Let me know by liking, hating or just leaving a comment below. Subscribe to see more and I'll see you in the next video.